To those watching who only know Reinhardt through Fire Emblem Heroes, learning that he is a villain in Thracia 776 may be surprising. He's mentioned several times throughout the game by minor antagonists as well as his little sister, Olwyn, and is on screen in a couple of cutscenes leading up to his showdown in Chapter 22. He's very important to the Dukedom of Frigga. Not only is he commander of the Gelbe Ritter, the Empire's most elite military unit, but he's also Ishtar's retainer and has been since her childhood. In fact, he's so powerful of a soldier that he's been dubbed the Second Coming of Thrud, the Crusader of Frigga despite not having any major holy blood of his own. He may not be able to wield Mjolnir, like Thrud did, but he is nonetheless godlike on the battlefield. There's grandeur to Reinhardt's name, as there is with Frigga. Yes, Frigga is the main enemy army that Leif must defeat to regain Northern Thracia, but the occupying forces are not nondescript nobodies. We see its soldiers and generals fight honorably, denounce cowardly, underhanded tactics, and question the morality of their rulers. As an antagonist, Reinhardt's character represents what Frigga truly values. Not only that, but his downfall brought on by personal loss and his defeat by Leaf reflect the sad reality that Frigga is currently facing as a whole, its own fall from grace. Reinhardt personifies the Frigan Empire, as well as its collapse against the liberation campaign across Yggdral. Because people understand Frigga about as well as Tharja understands good parenting, that is to say, barely, here's a quick breakdown of what Frigga is for those unfamiliar. Frigga is a dukedom northwest of Granvale. It is ruled by King Bloom and Queen Hilda. Ishtar, Tailtiu, Arthur, and Tini are all from here. Frigga's army is expansive, and after Arvis unites Granvale, he sends a portion of its forces to conquer northern Thracia. That portion is the army of Frigga that now occupies northern Thracia when the game begins. Whenever Reinhardt is mentioned by others, it is often with reverence. The only exceptions are Kempf and Julius. Largo, a Frigan general, points out that Kempf, another Frigan general, hates Reinhardt out of pure jealousy of his fame and takes it out on Olwyn. Julius hates Reinhardt out of jealousy and fear that Ishtar may harbor similar romantic feelings to him. Mueller, one of Reinhardt's subordinates, defends his character in front of the other soldiers for not being present in an important battle. Dorius, one of Leif's advisors, calls him an honorable warrior, and Olwyn fiercely reacts to August, one of Leif's other advisors, insulting his honor and calling him a servant of Loptus. He also hangs out with the right people. He's of course very close to Ishtar, but he's also close with Sias. Those two are highly treasured, powerful, and influential individuals in Yggdral. It's those kinds of relationships, and his raw power and leadership, that makes him so revered, envied, and gossiped in the Empire. It's really kind of fascinating. Fire Emblem Heroes does a perfect job at displaying how powerful he is. Because in Thracia 776, Reinhardt has amazing stats across the board, capped magic, four skills in Vantage, Charge, which forces another round of combat, Pavis, which in FE5 just negates damage entirely, and Adept, which gives him a guaranteed double attack. On top of those four skills, he has five leadership stars, which means his allies get a 15% boost in dodge and hit. Five movement stars, which gives him a 25% chance to make another move entirely, and finally, a pursuit critical coefficient of two, meaning that for every follow-up attack he has, his critical hit chance multiplies by two. And given that he wields Dire Thunder and a Master Sword, which both have high crit rates and a brave effect, he will automatically critical hit someone eventually. He's basically impossible to kill head on, and players need to strategize to deal with him. Just like Reinhardt, Frigga is also revered by other nations and leaders. Arvis uses his newly acquired dukedom and sends part of Frigga's massive army into northern Thracia to conquer and occupy it. Throughout the events of FE5, Frigga is taking on Selif and Leif's armies at the same time. It's the strongest army in Yggdral. But as Reinhardt shows, they aren't inherently evil, nor are they faceless opposition. There are, of course, recruitable Frigan characters with their own personalities, like Amalda, Fred, and Olwyn, who defect to Leif's army. But there are also several enemy Frigans who are good people. Paulus and Largo are Mook bosses, but they are both prideful and honorable. Reinhardt is like his subordinate generals, but he takes this reality further. Not only is he straight up the strongest Freegan soldier in the army, but his loyalty, pride, and humanity shine more than any other villain in the game. He loves Olwyn, loves Ishtar, and is close with Sias. 
Chapter 22 explores his humanity further as we see what happens when this supposedly infallible man falls apart upon suffering being abandoned by the people who make him happy. Julius' decision to ban Ishtar from seeing him is the first crushing blow to Reinhardt's spirit. No longer able to protect the woman he secretly loves, he goes into battle for two reasons. One, to protect Manster Castle from Leaf and Frigga's final attempt to maintain its grip over Northern Thracia, but second, to find Olwyn and convince her to come back to him. In the opening cutscene of Chapter 22, this is what he tells Sias. He wants to find Olwyn and wants her to come back to him. Now, bear in mind this is a translation of the game. I did check the original script with a friend of mine who speaks Japanese, and he said this is basically what goes on. Reinhardt underestimates his own sister. He assumes that the only possible reason that she could be fighting against the Empire is because she's just being manipulated, and that he could just convince her to switch forces. Sias, being the voice of reason that he is, gives his friend a reality check. Olwyn has grown up and she's carving her own path in this world. But still, it would be worth talking to her if he gets the chance. Reinhardt does get that chance, but his intention to bring her back fails. Olwyn will not return to Frigga until all of the children kidnapped from the Loptis Church are rescued. And many of those kids just happen to be in Manster, the castle that Reinhardt is defending. Reinhardt begs her not to continue, because doing so makes them enemies. Olwyn's will does not waver. So, sadly, Reinhardt concedes to fighting his sister. He also gives her his most prized weapon, the Blessed Sword. A cavalry effective brave sword which grants plus 10 resistance. Interestingly, there's a few interpretations for why he gives her the blade. Some think he felt hopeless and wanted to die, and this sword was designed for him to be killed. Some believe he no longer wants to use a sword that was given to him by Ishtar. How I see it is that Reinhardt accepts grown-up Olwyn's convictions as being real, and that he is aware that he may be killed in battle. The sword is a blessing to help her succeed in her journey, and for a piece of him to be at her side in the battles to come. Reinhardt's Achilles' heel, aside from being a mere mortal like the rest of us, are his emotions. While appearing ever poised on the outside, he is hurting internally. Ishtar, the woman he had romantic feelings for, was yanked away from him. Actually, that's an understatement. Let me reframe that. I cannot stand the sight of Reinhardt. The next time he appears before me, he will die. He was banned from seeing the woman he protected for years, and fell for, without any warning or closure. And Olwyn, the girl who was cherished and protected by him, who idolized and followed his footsteps, now fights against him, and is willing to cut him down to fulfill her purpose. My one goal was to match the greatness of my elder brother, but then, if ever my brother stands in my way, well, I will do what I must. The best way to explain the consequence from his weakness is, interestingly, from World of Thracia Reinhardt's level 40 conversation. Long ago, I fought Prince Leaf and his army at the river Thracia. We had the advantage. My forces outnumbered his, and my position was more favorable and yet I was defeated. But how? To what do I ascribe my failure? Thinking about it now, I believe the question is one of spirit. Whatever the odds against them, Prince Leaf's forces possessed a will strong enough to grasp victory. Their determination shone, and it was something I lacked. That, I suppose, is my weakness. Even though Leaf and Selif had momentum marching into northern Thracia, had Ishtar or Olwyn, or both women, been at his side in that battle, there's no telling how uplifted Reinhardt would be. He wouldn't be weighed down by anything, that's for sure. Even considering how fired up Leaf is in this fight, coming off massive, tide-shifting victories in Leonster and Ulster, cooperating with his idol Selif in a coordinated strike against Frigga, Reinhardt had every conceivable tactical advantage in this fight. If Reinhardt didn't get double whammy like he did, he could have defeated Leaf, protected Manster, and potentially saved Frigga from its eventual demise. But the reality was, as Reinhardt aptly puts it in his hindsight, Leaf had more to fight for. As Chapter 22 of Thracia 776 displays the shattering of Reinhardt's spirit from two people going apart from him, Chapter 8 of Genealogy of the Holy War showcases the complete collapse of Frigga's hold over northern Thracia from two forces coming together, one liberation army led by Leif, and the other one led by Selif. 
Chapter 8 of Fire Emblem 4 chronicles Seleph's quest to assist Leaf in liberating northern Thracia from Frigga's clutches. Throughout the chapter, Seleph liberates Ulster, then rescues Leaf from Frigga's desperate attempt to reclaim Leonster. Once united, they coordinate. Seleph would march to Connaught to fight King Bloom. Meanwhile, Leaf would march to Manster to fight Raedric, the traitor general of Connaught who now rules that kingdom with his posse of Lopto priests. Reinhardt and the Gelbachitter fail to stop Leaf, and consequently, Frigga's military no longer stands in his way. Simultaneously, Bloom falls to Seleph in Connaught, causing Frigga to lose all dominion it had over northern Thracia. Frigga, a mighty and highly revered dukedom, lose nearly everything at once, and later in genealogy of course, Queen Hilda and Ishtar die in battle, effectively ending Frigga's empire as we know it. Reinhardt is a self-made, prodigious man of Frigga at the pinnacle of power, who strives to be an exemplary, upstanding, and loyal soldier for his loved ones, his friends, and his dukedom. Likewise, Frigga as a whole is a district of Yggdral that is revered for its might and people. From the perspectives of those in the army, they are just fighting to protect the Empire and the new normal ever since they were ordered to conquer northern Thracia. It has some major flaws, especially regarding its royal family, but the identity of its people is more complex than that. It has people who have morals, duties, and families to think about and will fight anyone who will want to disrupt that and that is respectable. One of the many highlights of Thracia 776's writing is that it allows its villains to be sympathized. Aside from a few bad apples like Kempf, who is just the worst, many Freegan soldiers and generals display qualities of honor, loyalty, and pride, with some speaking against the Empire's actions. We can sympathize with Reinhardt too. He wants the best for his sister, is a model soldier for his subordinates to follow, and is famous across the continent. Sadly, Reinhardt and Frigga both suffer from short-sightedness and contempt. Frigga's rise to power was thanks in large part to their cooperation with the Loptis Church and participation in child hunts. Reinhardt, despite his position in the army, does not do or say anything significant about the atrocities and wrongdoings of the Empire. Even when confronted by Olwyn, he still chose his home. Irrespective of the humanity displayed by himself, Frigga's soldiers and generals they are pawns for the royal family's heinous actions, who in turn are pawns for Arvis's master plan. And ultimately, no amount of loyalty or honor will stop hero gods like Seleph and Leif from succeeding in their righteous journeys to bring down evil people who wish to rule the world. When it's all said and done, and Reinhardt's story in Thracia 776 is over, he should be remembered as not just an honorable soldier, but an honorable man. Regardless of his shortcomings and his defeat, Frigga and Yggdrill, as a whole, should remember the grandeur that followed him. Just a normal human, yet able to accomplish more than elites worldwide with holy blood flowing through their veins could do. Fire Emblem Heroes does an amazing job showcasing how menacingly powerful he was, and they also recognize the kind of character he is. Perhaps in another story, where Frigga played a different role in Arvis's plans, we could see for ourselves what true legacy the second coming of Thrud would leave behind.